Welcome back you guys. So today's video is going to be a bit of a tips and tricks video. It's going to be pretty much everything I've learned and that I know so far on this new update. A lot of these tips can help you out a ton, especially at the beginner stage for those of you who are new to this. Um, some of you guys may already know some of them, but I personally think you might not know at least one of them. So if you don't know one of them or if you learned something new in this video, be sure to leave a thumbs up. And if you knew all of them, you're a pro already at this, you're going to go far in this game. But anyways, let's go ahead and jump into the first one. So the first little hint is going to be that the attacking in this game is actually far different from the one in Clash of Clans. You'll notice that right away, each troop already, even just the way you train troops is different, but the biggest part is each troop will have a different, um, kind of like a different power up to them, uh, I believe a special ability. Thing is though, you don't get to choose when they're activated. They are activated generally right when you place them or on their first few hits. So let me just go ahead and try and find uh, this replay I was going to show you guys. I believe it's right here. So you can notice the difference between how you use the troops actually. So what you want to do is when you're first using your troops, like in Clash of Clans, you might start off by placing archers on the outside and just picking off buildings. That is a huge mistake. You do not want to do this in that that completely voids their special ability. For the archers, it's being invisible for a short time. You don't want to use waste that ability on outside buildings. What you want to do is you want to use that right away, right on top of defenses. So you want to place the archers pretty much right on top of the defense so that the defense will completely ignore them while your archers are shooting them down. So that is how you make the most of your abilities. You also want to do the same for your barbarians. You want to place them where their rage is going to be the most useful. So usually that'll be right on top of a building. And then also with the giant, those are on their first hits. Um, that's as far as I've got for troops so far, so that's all I can give my opinions on. But basically, don't waste your abilities picking off buildings. Always take out the defenses first. Uh, right now, since there aren't many buildings in the game, you'll have plenty of time to clean up extra buildings at the end. The second thing is, going all giants isn't that bad of an idea. Uh, since there aren't many buildings that you have to pick off or clean up at the end, so really going four giants like this battle right here could be a good choice, but really it depends on the base you're going against. All giants will be a for sure three star on faces for town hall, it's town hall one, two, and maybe three as well, uh, lower level town hall threes. But the only time I would go all giants is if there aren't walls like completely blocking off an entire defense. So if you have a cannon that is surrounded by all walls, then going all giants might not be the best idea, but anytime there's just only defenses, no walls. I would strongly suggest going all giants for a for sure three star. If there is, I'll have another replay actually in a sec where there is a defense enclosed by the walls and then you can just switch up the attack strategy a bit, another easy three star. But I'll go ahead and show you the guys that in a sec. So these giants are just gonna go ahead and clean up the rest of the space for that easy three star. And actually part of this next, next part is going to lead into my second tip which is, um, let me just go ahead and find that replay. I believe it is, I think it's this one. So the third tip is right here, you can see the cannon is enclosed by that little wall section. So what the tip is, is you wanna switch up your army based on the base you're attacking. Unlike in the regular Clash of Clans, you don't actually have to pre-train your army and then whatever that army is, use it. In this one, you can actually change your army you guys already probably know this, but you can change your army right in battle before the attack starts. So I suggest you change up that army to match the base you're going up against and give you the best chance of winning. Uh, yeah, so a much better chance at winning. And yeah. So make sure you switch up those buildings. Like I said, archers um, are great for shooting over the walls. So if there aren't any walls like fully enclosed like that, then I would go barbarians or giants. Mass giants has been working great for me so far. And then, yeah, and then moving on. So next up is the base building aspect of this. As you can see, my base is a little unfinished. Got the walls all over here. And you'll also notice that the wall compartments are different. You cannot move them uh, one at a time. You have to move them five at a time, I believe. So that is a bit different. So base building will be a bit different. But at the early town hall stages, when you're really, I don't, you can't really even remove tall grass or stuff like that at town hall two. At town hall three, you can, but for Builder, builder Hall actually, Builder Hall 2 you cannot. So what I would do is, I would just place, basically all you have to do to win is place your defenses around the Town Hall. What you don't want to do is have them all on the same side. 
where they will be easily uh, picked off by the troops. The reason you want to put them around the town hall is since the town hall is by far the tankiest building that you'll have. So it's a smart idea to have that in the middle. So while once, say, these two defenses are destroyed, this double cannon will still be able to shoot uh, the troops attacking the builder hall, giving them more time to take care of all those troops. And then the next tip is, in this game mode there are no wall breakers, so you can use that to your advantage by using dead zones and cut off walls to funnel the troops into your base. Or into your trap, sorry, and into all of your defenses. So what I mean by that is, if you take a look here, I'm just going to go ahead and move this army camp out of the way. If you take a look here, if you place a troop right about here, um, right by this wall over here, that troop is not going to go and attack through that wall. It's going to actually walk all the way around. And that's where, where you want to place all your traps. You want to look at where the funneling is going to go and then place your traps accordingly. So I don't have spring traps just yet. So I have my push trap here. So the troop's going to walk around into that push trap and it's going to launch it way over here. So you want to use that to your advantage when base building. Uh, just know that there are no wall breakers. So you can really mess with the opponent's funneling if done correctly. And you can pretty much guarantee where all the troops are going to go. You can even, what you can do is, if you move that over like that, a giant will walk through that little entrance right there, and you can have a spring trap right there to fling it off of the map. So make sure you use that to your advantage. Um, I know a lot of opponents will be, and once this game becomes a little more popular and people get the hang of it, um, you'll start seeing that a bit more, I believe. Um, the other thing is push traps. A completely new defense. You get them at the very early level, so everyone will have them. So what, you, what most people might want to do is once you get the fling trap, you might try and fling it. A lot of people's first instinct is to fling it away from your base because you don't want them destroying it, obviously. But that's actually wrong. What you want to do is you want to fling the troops directly into the middle of your base. The reason you want to do that is in the middle of your base, you'll be able to have all of your defenses shooting at it rather than just one. So that troop will actually go down surprisingly quick. And so that's what you want to do. So for me right now, I have it just... My, my base is kind of like a makeshift base right now, so it's not too much planning into it. But I want to push the troops into this Elixir Collector and my gem mine, where these two defenses will be able to shoot at them while the troops are stuck on the Elixir Swords and gem mine. So that's my thoughts on these uh, push trap. You can really utilize that to uh, kind of make your bases a bit more interesting and tougher to 3-star or to beat. Anyways... Right now, as of right as of right now, uh, I'm only at Builder Hall three, so that's all the tips I have for now. Um, I'll have a few more tips coming uh, really soon, actually today, probably in about an hour or two after this video is posted. I will be live streaming again later today on my free to play account, which is my other account, and I'm going to be trying to max out that account. Free to play, I'll be doing a bit of a let's play, so you guys can follow along in that. Along with, I'll be sharing a bunch of tips and stuff like that. Might do a few clan war attacks, and yeah. Anyways, make sure you tune in for that, and I'll see you guys there. Peace. And before you guys leave, the winner of today's iTunes or Google Play gift card giveaway is Brad or Bradley A. I'm not going to disclose his entire last name just for confidentiality, but Brad, uh, make sure you comment on this video saying that you won, and then I'll email you over the code for the iTunes or Google Play gift card. Anyways, if you guys want to join for yourselves, stay tuned uh, right after this. I'll have a little introduction on how to join the tournament or the giveaway. Hey guys, we will be doing a $100 giveaway until the end of the month of May. To enter the giveaway, just click the link in the description below or in the comments and follow the instructions. We will be giving away about 7 or 8 iTunes and or Google Play gift cards, each worth about $10 to $15. And we will be announcing winners throughout the next two weeks and winners will be announced at the end of videos, so make sure you check back for those. If someone doesn't claim the prize within a few days, we will do a redraw, so make sure you check back for those just so you don't miss it. Anyways, thanks for watching, and good luck.